the 3D animation class. Week two, um, today, we're gonna briefly cover uh, what it means to create an armature and how to add one to your character. Um, and then we'll also just look at the built-in plugin in Blender for creating a rig. Um, so we'll just kind of remind ourselves what an armature is, what a rig is, um, and then we're going to just look at um, your assignment one, which is to create a character animation. And we'll just kind of walk through some of the steps together for that. So uh, over in uh, Blender, uh, I will provide this um, character model for you. Uh, I am also providing it rigged as well. So I, it, as you're seeing it right now, it does not have a rig on it, um, but I will generate, oh, well, you'll see me create the rig just so that you understand kind of what's happening. And then if you wish, you can take this um, and use it for your assignment one. This is a free open source model that actually came from Blender. So like if you go to blender.org, they have some free assets that you can play with, this being one of them. And it's a nice, simple character model. Um, the, what else was I gonna say? If you have um, another character that you want to animate for this um, or kind of follow along with this, that's great as well. So you don't have to create anything or find anything on the internet. You can definitely use this one because this is a nice, like, even mesh uh, and you shouldn't run into too many troubles with um, creating a rig. Okay. So before we even uh, play with this character, let's take a, a little step back and talk about what um, what a rig and what an armature even is. And so like I'm hiding all these. So what uh, if, when you're when we're creating things in a 3D space in Blender, um, the things that we create are like rigid. They're solid. Um, so you can animate objects but they'll always be just like one solid chunk until you create an armature and what an armature does is it's like the bones inside of anything and so like obviously it, it does make sense to think of a character because like a character a humanoid character will have bones um but even like animating other things like uh if you were to animate somebody's hair like moving around like you'd have an armature or bones in the hair to tell it where to move. So um, just a super quick example. Um, let's do like a cylinder and um, let's just, let's uh, SZ scale it this way and I'm gonna do a control R, oops, tab for edit mode, control R, mouse wheel up several times to get um, some loop cuts like this, right click to apply. Okay, now let's, uh, let's just, add three bones to the inside of this. So um, shift A to our add menu and uh, we go down to the armature menu and we want single bone to start. Um, now, if you're doing things in the center, it's probably gonna be hidden behind your model. Um, so one thing that's usually a good idea on uh, when you're do working with armatures is to go to the bone properties here, this green one, and go view Port display? No, let's see, where is it? Ah, it's in um, here in object data properties. I get those green ones mixed up. So here in viewport display, um, we have in front, this checkbox here, in front. And so now you can see here we have this bone inside. It's inside the cylinder, but it is we can always see it in front of the cylinder. So this is this is pretty handy um, with armatures because it will be inside your mesh, but you still need to be able to see it. Okay, so let's go to orthographic view. I'm gonna um, GZ move this down. And uh, the general idea here with bones is that the, the 
thick the thick part of this little arrow so the the balls are joints the thick part of the arrow is the part closest to like the center of what you're doing or not necessarily but like the where the where the motion originates so and then these point kind of out further from that so like if this if this was going to be an arm you know the shoulder would be here and these would point towards the hand so now it's as easy as uh going to edit mode you can click and gz grab this one and then you can e extrude a bone out like this and then hit z so it goes straight up and then we can do it one more time e for extrude z to keep it in the z axis boom just like that so we got three bones easy enough um and then what we can do uh tab back to object mode I'm going to click on the armature and then shift click, hold on the shift key and click on my object that I want to, you know, have these bones. Bring over parenting menu, control P, set, did it backwards again, uh, sorry. Click the object first, then hold on the shift key, then click the armature second. So uh, it was the opposite of the, the way I said it before. Control P, set parent to, uh, and we want armature to form with automatic weights. So now you can see that um, the cylinder is parented to the armature. And uh, when we go into, if we have the armature selected, we can go down to pose mode. And if we rotate any of these bones, you can see that it's going to uh, rotate um, our cylinder. And remember like the, the directions of these bones matters because the ones further down the chain move the ones um, in front of it. So that's that's an armature. That's and that's like the the simplest definition of it. Now a rig is sort of like a fancier set of controls for an armature. Um, now, uh, like one of the um, and this is done using um, object constraints and bone constraints. So one of the, one of the main ways that um, we use rigs uh, is through bone constraints. I, I may have just said that. I paused my recording for a second. So um, let's let's talk through a simple example. So I kind of bent this guy a little bit. Um, maybe he's just a little worm. Um, so if we go into um, pose mode um, we can see uh, down here uh, when you click on an individual bone um, on the right side here we have uh, this little blue one that says bone constraint properties and um, the one that um, you use a lot with characters is inverse kinematics um, and what this means is uh, let me do this here Inverse kinematics means like the, the end of the chain, the end of your like a, a line of bones can manipulate the ones behind it. And it's sort of like how your brain works. So like if, if, you, if you are um, wanting to grab your phone off the desk, you don't think, your brain doesn't say, okay, first move your shoulder here, then move your elbow here, then move your wrist here, then extend your fingers, then like grab like this. Your brain is like controlling your hand and your hand goes out and grabs the thing and your wrist and your elbow and your shoulder just kind of are along for the ride. Um, and that's that's inverse kinematics because like kinematics would mean like this way, moving in this direction controlling things in this direction, inverse kinematics is, is going in the opposite direction. So in um, in Blender here, like typically with, without a rig, so actually let me just remove this real quick. If I wanted to like move the end of this here, I would say, okay, like rotate this one first, then rotate this one, then rotate this one. And that's how I do it. But if, if you use inverse kinematics, you only need to move the end one. So let me just kind of move this, move this back sort of generally. Um, and on the front one here, I'm going to my bone constraints, and I'm going to say uh, add bone constraint tracking inverse kinematics. And so uh, this says, you know, 
this is basically saying, okay, well, how far down the chain do you want to control? So if I just do two like this, um, I believe, so like if I move this bone, yeah, so you can see that by moving this, it's moving one bone and two bones. The bottom one stays rigid. So you, like by moving this, like it's, I can't drag it any further Sort of like you can't move your hand any f further than you like the rest of your arm will let you, um, but it, you can move it within the range of any of those. And it's because I've designated this chain length as two. If I do one here, it's basically the same as like a zero. That I'm, it's really only controlling the end. But if I do three, it's going. I'm controlling the the three bones. One, two, three. So now I can. It'll move all three um, when I when I do this. And so this this is like kind of step one of of making a rig is like so you can imagine like each hand has inverse kinematics you know chain length back to the shoulder or each arm I should say same with the legs that like the foot is the end of the chain and that moves goes up to your hips like maybe um, you know m maybe your torso is also a spine or a, a has a chain of inverse kinematics that it's like you start at your hips and it goes up to your shoulders so that like when you move your shoulders, you know, your tummy kind of goes with it and your head comes in the other direction as well. Um, and then it's from there, it's just like, uh, you know, creating little controls. So what we can do here is if I go back to object mode, I can add um, and like it can be anything. You can add anything in here to, to like control. But sometimes like it makes sense to just do like um, an empty so maybe I'll do like a circle and I'll just move it up here and maybe I'll like RX 90 like that and maybe RY just like this a little bit I don't know so it's like sort of pointed at it just to get in the right spot and then I can go back to my armature here and um, you can set a target for the inverse kinematic so it's like okay I want you to always target the empty and so now like even in object mode, like moving this empty circle, and I've gets a little bit off screen here. Whoops, moving this empty circle is like controlling the whole thing. Um, and then the the other thing too, like you could do is like, and so these these object constraints and bone constraints are kind of like you can mix and match and combine a lot of these things to create you know the rig of your dreams. Um, so like you could say, uh, actually, let me go back to the armature. We can go back to uh, bone constraints. Oops, pose mode. But look at some of these other ones. And, and you can kind of figure out what they do. So like track two would mean that it would always look at a particular thing. Um, limit rotation. So like maybe you have a joint, like an elbow, that you don't want to extend past 180 degrees. So you could put a limit rotation here like this and say limit X in the local space, minimum zero, max 180, something like that. So it'll, it'll only like, it can only uh, rotate as much as you want it to. Um, so like the, the bike that I did um, for work, I, would, I limited the the rotation of the 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 pedal to like always be exactly the same, so like to remain constant regardless of where it was, because because you know, like when you pedal a bike, you know it's rotating like this, like it's moving in a circle, but the the pedal itself is not rotating, you know. So it's like anyway. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Now um, a lot, thankfully, a lot of very smart people have. Um, saved a lot of the work related to this saved you the effort of doing a lot of this work I should, is how I should phrase it um, by creating add-ons and things that that make rigs and stuff automatically so I think it's important for you to understand how this works in case you need to do some of something like this on your own and it's also just important to understand like the meaning behind it inverse kinematics, bone constraints, like limiting rotation and position and stuff like that. We'll, we will be able to do a little bit more of this um, when we're animating faces. Because um, that's another thing too, like if you are if you have eyes, 
if you if you're animating eyes like you want to you want them to track to a certain thing so you can move it around but you don't want it to rotate so far so that their eyes like roll back into their head things like that um okay so let's let's um let's talk about rigify so i'm gonna uh pause real quick okay so um here's here's our sample character pretty slick um now uh Blender has a very nice add-on built-in that you don't need to download anything, and it's called Rigify. And and I should say that there are there are many other rigging plugins and other programs that do rigging and stuff like that. You're welcome to explore some of those and maybe let me know if you find one that's great. But um, I prefer to just use things that are built-in, so I don't have to download any other gobbledygook back in blender so to enable rigify uh go up to your edit menu top left down to your preferences and we go to add-ons click the add-ons and you can search for rigify r-i-g um yours may already be enabled mine is it's because it's got the check mark next to it uh and you're off you've got it so now um, let's add an armature to this guy real, real quick. Armature, um, basics. So, so meta, the, uh, sorry, not meta rig. Rigify gives you these other kind of pre-built things here to, uh, to add. What is this called? Armatures? Oof. It's hot today. I'm, I'm wearing my painting clothes. So that's painting. Uh, I'm going to do a basic human. So there's human meta rig. This one has like fingers and everything that you need uh, and more than you need for this assignment, I'd say. Um, so I'm going to do a basic human meta rig. Great. Now, I, w I will say um, a lot of times I have problems with uh, scale scaling of things. Um, so in my expert opinion or my sort of expert opinion, um, you want, you want these to be about the same size, but a lot of times, um, scaling in object mode is going to like throw things off a little bit. Cause you kind of want the scale to be, oh, and it's interesting that this guy is, has a funny, whoops, like a skinnier scale here. I just noticed that. And actually, this this is another good reason to do this. So, um, let me see. Oh, yeah, so all these are locked. Okay, I just need to unlock all these. Okay, um, so I want these to be the same size. So rather than um, scale down the rig, I'm actually going to scale up. Oh, and of course, the, the eyes are off. So I'm going to control click that, and I'm going to parent, control P, parent to object, keep transform. Okay. Um, okay, so now I'm going to scale this up a little bit, and I'm just going to try to align these so they're relatively close. And actually, I think I crushed it. Okay, cool. So you can see that um, my scale has changed a little bit. It's like 1.3, 1.5, whatever, and then the the rig is 1, 1, 1. So I want, I want my... Uh, mesh to also be the same scale because like for whatever reason I have trouble with this if the scale is different um, so what I'm gonna do it's actually pretty easy I'm gonna uh, control a and I'm gonna apply so the apply menu comes up and I'm gonna apply scale and so watch what happens to my scale when I hit this it resets it kind of recalibrates it to one 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 so now they're both a scale of one and and I can get to um, applying this rig uh, applying the armature to this mesh. Okay. Uh, got the rig selected. I want to view board display, view it in front. Let's get my front view here. Um, now I'm just going to edit. And um, I'm going to make sure to... Uh, so I'm in edit mode with my, my rig selected. Up here in the top right, uh, right above my head, there's this apply changes to matching bone on the opposite side of the x-axis. That is a good thing to do because this is symmetrical. Okay. Um, 
and and how it does that just to kind of a side note um has to do with the naming of the bones so like in the in the event that you are creating your own armature for something that's not a human um the the corresponding bones the like the bones on each side need to have the same name and then followed by dot l and dot r so like this is pelvis dot l because it's left and this is pelvis dot r because it's right so and that's how it knows what the corresponding bone on the opposite size side is it has the same name neither l or r okay so now i'm just going to um put these into place so i'm going to g move these down here just kind of moving things like this. This is like the neck, GZ. And I should, let me undo that because I definitely need to make sure that um, the ones in the center stay GZ in the center. Because these ones don't have corresponding ones. And actually, um, we're going to do that little fix here in just a second. Um, GZ. I, it's, I feel, it feels like there's maybe one too many um, for the head here, but. We'll, we'll deal with that later. So G moving this one to the elbow, G moving this one to the wrist, G moving this one to the fingers. So your, anytime you want a, a bend, you're moving one of these balls here because that's a joint. Okay, torso, that looks fine. Uh, these are your hips. This is kind of the top of the leg here. Knees, great. Um, this is the heel and toe. So we need a little side view here to adjust some more of these out to the toe, move this. And so you want, you do want these to be positioned like, uh, pretty close to where they would be in the human body. Um, because, uh, they can uh, like, if, for example, like if in your elbow, hold on, in your elbow, so like the joint for your elbow is like pretty close to like the back here. Um, and so you've got a lot of extra flesh and kind of tendons and things in the front so that when it um, extends and when it bends, there's like kind of some bunching up that happens and it's it doesn't kind of mess with it too much but imagine if it were back like the other way and your elbow was really close to the front anytime you would bend it would like really stretch all of this like meat around the wrong way and it would start to look go goofy um so that's just a consideration uh let me also let's also get a top view going because i feel like i messed this one up a little bit okay wrist there you go this goes out to the hand cool all right, uh, this is a pretty easy rig, so um, not too much to do with that. Oh, I suppose I should kind of get the spine a little bit more spiny. And who knows, maybe the shoulders need to be like a little bit further like this. Okay. Now, for whatever reason, um, and, may, and actually, maybe it's fixed. So I'm just going to try it right now. So um, I've got MetaRig here. I'm going to select my mesh for... Whoa, oh my gosh, guys. You, I um, didn't realize I was on my webcam for several minutes. Okay, sorry about that. So um, I've got everything pretty much in place here. Now, I in the past when I've done this, um, I get an error because these two bones are disconnected. It's like this is disconnected from that. Um, let's see if I get that same error and, uh, well, I know exactly how to fix it. So I'm selecting the mesh first, holding on shift key, then clicking the armature. Uh, I'm in object mode, control P armature to form with automatic weights. Um, I'll, I actually realized I didn't talk about weights, um, in our first example. So I'll show you this real quick after we get this done. Okay. Um, now we have. And actually, it seemed to work. So actually, let me just test real quick. So I've got the armature selected. I'm going to go to pose mode. And let me just do this a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Great. Undo, undo. Now, in uh, we've got meta rig selected. Um, over here, we've got our object data properties. 
and you have a Rigify dropdown, and this says Generate Rig. You can click that. Okay, yep, okay, so here's the same error. Undo, 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 undo. Okay, yep, okay, I think I did it. Maybe it went too far. So um, I got the same error, but this that's easy. So let me click on, let's click on the armature here, tab. Um, I'm gonna select this bone in the center of the chest here. I'm gonna shift C, oops, nope. Shift S is the shortcut. And I wanna move my 3D cursor to the selected. So it put my little red and white 3D cursor right where that joint is. Then I'm select this joint on the bottom here, this one. Shift S, and I wanna move selection to cursor. So they are occupying the exact same coordinates in our 3D space. Okay, uh, now try it again. So clicking on the mesh, shift clicking on the armature, control P, auto armature to form with automatic weights. Great, then we've got a rigify menu here, generate rig. Final step is, um, Final step. Oh yeah. So we need to we need to now armature to form with automatic weights for the rig, um, and why that? And so like we're we're pretty much done with the um, this meta rig now, um, and now we take the rig that was generated and parent that to um, the mesh. So we got the mesh selected first, and then I'm gonna shift click on the rig here, control P, armature to form with automatic weights, and it works, great. So now, if I go into pose mode, you can see that if I grab the hand, I can do a little hand, handy dandy. Rotate like this, yeah, okay. Great. Ah, but see, look at this, my like bone my elbow joint maybe was like too too far to the front because you can you see how it's sort of bending the wrong way let's check out the feet whoops it's like if i pick up the foot okay so that's going the right way let me just undo a few times not going to generate my rig yet yeah so look let's do my top down view so my elbow joint is like just on the wrong side of the center of this here. So like what I need to do, and that, is it parented already? Let's see, uh, pose mode, if I go to pose mode. Okay, I need to undo one more time. There we go. Sorry, pose mode, okay. Uh, Back to edit mode. So what I need to do is go to my top down and I need to just move this elbow towards the back a little bit. And I let me just look a little closer at my shoulder too. I think I want my shoulder to be like a little bit, whoops. I wanted just the joint, please. Just the joint, please. I want this to be like a little bit more out, away from the body, and maybe, oops, undo, I hit the F key, I wonder what that does, and just like a little bit more centered there, okay, save, all right, tab, object mode, hit the mesh, shift click that, control P, arm to form with automatic weights, rigify it, generate rig, hide my meta rig, click the mesh, shift click on the armature, control P, armature to form with automatic weights. Okay, let's try this again. So now we go to pose mode. Now if I move the hand, ah uh, yes. Okay, so you can see that now my elbow is moving in the in the proper direction. Great. Um, you know, I don't really know what why a lot of these other ones don't do anything. The, specifically, these green ones for me don't move, and I don't totally understand what they're for. Um, but I, I'm just gonna go with it. So, okay, I'm gonna save this for you at this point. So this is this is this can be where you download it from here. So let me pause real quick. Okay, 
so um let's let's animate so um real quick let's I will, actually before we animate i want to look at um whoops i want to look at our assignment one here it is <clears throat> assignment one parkour Please animate a character doing parkour. Your character should interact with at least three obstacles. You should have an animated camera. Please render out your animation into a video file and submit with your Blender project file. You may use the provided character model or another model of your choosing or creation. This is worth 15 points. It is due Thursday, September 29th. So that is 29 days from today when I'm posting this or 28, I guess you could technically say, um, nine points for having your character interact with three obstacles, two points for a camera animation, two points for a rendered video file and a blender file and two points for on time submission. What is parkour here? I, I posted a link to this. Um, it's like people just like running and flipping and doing silly stuff. Now, um, Obviously, I want you to um, aspire to do some like lifelike movements, but it's okay if it's like a little ridiculous. Um, so we're just trying to have fun, and we're just trying to have a variety of movements um, happening in your animation, um, and just like getting used to dealing with a rig, adding keyframes and stuff like that. So. I, I'm going to walk through how I would do one obstacle. You can choose to do this ex the same thing. Um, and, uh, and then you can kind of add the rest on your own. Um, I will say first that when animating humanoids, things that look like humans, um, it's really, really, really helpful to have some reference material. So like um, that video that I just showed you, it's, it's linked in the project description or the assignment description. Um, look at that. Maybe, maybe pick a specific thing out of that video and say like, oh, I want to do a flip that looks like that. Or I want to do somebody running up a wall that looks like that. Um, so you're just going to be creating three obstacles and it can be really simple things like jumping over this and then like, I don't know, rolling over that or like just like super basic things. We're just like kind of practicing working with character animations. Okay. So here's here's how I would do this. So I think um, I'm going to start with, uh, oops, what's going on here? Shift A. Where, where? Oh, it's because I'm in pose mode. Object mode. Let's go to object mode. Shift A. I'm just going to add my first obstacle. Um, so f I'm going to do a plane to be... Oops. Okay. <laughs> so my 3D cursor was at up here. Um, and when you add new objects, it goes to where your 3D cursor is. So Shift C will reset your 3D cursor back to the 0, 0, 0. Anyway, Shift A. Adding a plane. This is going to be my floor. Um... I'll rename it floor up here because that'll be good. Do I move it here like this? And then um, I don't know, maybe maybe a uh, maybe a Suzanne is going to be um, our obstacle. R Z one eighty R X G Z R X. All right. So what I'm going to what I want to do is I want to have um my character just like do a flip over this. Um so here's and there's there are many different ways to animate things. Um but I I'm going to say my recommendation is let's let me click on my rig here is um you animate the position of the object if it's like transforming like if you're um that you you want your character's origin point to move with your character so like if i go goad <laughs> if 
But I went into pose mode here and I just like selected, you know, all of this stuff. If I selected everything and G moved it over here. Um, everything but the eyes, interesting. So like you can see that the origin point is over here, but like my character is over here. So then if I go back into um, object mode, like, and if I rotate, it's going to be like doing some crazy stuff because the, the, when you move, when you move your character in pose mode, it's, it's not moving the object. The, the origin point is staying the same. Um, so I'm going to undo this a few times. Undo, undo, undo. Okay. So the, the first thing I'm going to do, and this, this is sort of like how they do it in movies sometimes is that they'll do like a little previs. Um, so I'm just going to kind of open up my timeline a little bit more here. And uh, I'm going to animate, just like very roughly animate um, the, the character as a whole moving and flipping over. So first I'm going to um, start on frame one. I'm going to, and maybe I'm even going to like auto key here just to like get it all in place. Why, what is this F75 thing? Maybe that's something from a holdover from, uh, or is that just a label? Anyway, so uh, I'm gonna go to frame one. I've got my auto keying on. You know, I'll just like, do I? No, just move it a little bit just to get a keyframe. And then um, I'm going to, we'll go to like fr frame 100. We'll, we'll, we'll see how this kind of feels. Do I'll move, move, it, move it over here. Flip over, sure. Okay, so let's let's look at my frame rate here. So I've, we're at about 24 frames per second. Um, I'm gonna go back to my uh, scene properties and change this to 30, and hopefully that feels a little faster. One, two, three. Um, maybe I'm gonna move my, my keyframes a little bit closer too. Like I don't want it to be pretty quick. Whoops, and I undo, undo, because I moved both keyframes over and I just wanted to move them closer like this. Great. Um, the next part I'm going to do is I'm going to like have this start to flip. So right here, maybe frame 30, I'm going to, you know, just like G, G, Y, just move it a little bit. Just let it add a keyframe here like this. And then up here, I want you to be G, Y, whoops, G, Z up in the air and rx90 rx180 actually z so you're going to be kind of up up in the air like this and then we want this to be uh i'm actually going to type it in here i want my rotation x to be 360 and then z location back at zero <laughs> So again, like it looks a little silly. Oh, but it flipped around. Oh yeah. Oh, because I actually need to change my uh, X rotation to 360 again, because it I want it to stay rotated in that direction. Hoi. Ah. Okay. So this is this is like the starting point. Uh, and now I'm going to go into pose mode and animate the, like the the legs moving. So um, let's go into pose mode here. And we'll go to our side orthographic view. So let's find like a starting position for um, our character here. So maybe, um, whoops, where's my pose mode? So I'm gonna grab this one here and kind of G down. I'm gonna grab this foot and kind of move it back. Grab this one, bring the heel up. So we're kind of getting ready to push off. This one's gonna be kind of here. Um, oh, my eyes again are doing something funny. What's the deal with the eyes? Um, what should I do with these eyes? I'm just going to um, join these together. So j just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to hit, con I've got all these selected. I'm going to control, control J. 
Oh yeah, so like you've got to select the eyes first, hold down the shift key, and then the last one selected is the right one, and then we can uh, control J like this, and it just joins it. Okay, so hopefully that should do the trick. Okay, now uh, we're in pose mode. Let's try this again. So if I G move him down, oh, goodness. Ah, okay, I've, I figured it out. Um, so if, if you have multiple parts of your... Um, multiple parts of your, uh, or sorry, multiple meshes as part of your character, you just need to like do the automatic weights thing for the for the different parts of your mesh too. So like, uh, I'm just gonna shift click both the eyes, then shift click the rig, and then I can do uh, control P, armature to form with automatic weights. And then um, it's it should work. So if I go to pose mode here and move this guy down. Yeah, okay. Okay. Problem solving. Okay, quickly. Let's get this guy in like a good starting pose. So he's kind of squatted down. I'm going to grab his foot and move it back and bring his heel up. So he's kind of like getting ready to push off like this. Bring it, slide this first foot forward a little bit. Let's deal with these hands. Oh, I don't know. Maybe he does run like this. Do you move this down? I'll rotate. So this is, this one's like... This is kind of tricky to get. Uh, sorry, Suzanne. I need to hide you. To get right. And, uh, and obviously, like, take time to do this. And it's not a perfect science. It's something that you just kind of figure out on your own. And maybe he's like leaning forward a little bit too. Yeah, a little bit more of an aggressive stance here. Um, I want this to be, that's funny how his like is, so again, like it's bothering me a little bit because his um, like shoulder is moving a little bit too far. I kind of want to adjust his elbow like that. There we go. Okay. And maybe we'll have him reaching a little bit further forward. Okay. Um, so all of this is on frame zero. I've been doing on frame zero. So um, again, I've got auto keying on here. So um, it's added a keyframe to all of these things here at frame zero. But I am actually just going to uh, da -da 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 object so you kind of have to be careful um, with where where you're adding keyframes, but luckily I can just kind of move all of these onto frame one. Hopefully, if I scroll up, can I select all of these and just move it here like that? Let's turn Suzanne back on. Now the the, uh, the the cool thing about um, also having like bones named correctly left right is that you can um, you can copy the inverse of, of these motions so like whatever whatever the right one's doing you can copy that onto the left one at a different point. So actually I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off the auto key and I'm and I uh, d deleted the keyframes for for the for these things because I think it's going to be easier if I just if I key the things I want to move specifically so I'm clicking on the rig I want I'm going to animate this hand and I'm going to I insert keyframes location rotation those are the only ones I'm doing same with this one I insert keyframes location rotation I'm doing like the torso here I'm doing um, that foot and this foot and I'm doing the heels Cool. Okay. Um, so then, if if you if you hit A here, um, you're selecting all the different parts, and then it'll show you here. And actually, I switched to the dope sheet too. I should have said that. I switched from timeline to dope sheet just because it's a little easier to see. Um, and I can see that there's a lot of these things on the uh, on frame zero here. So I'm going to delete these keyframes. They're so on frame one here. Okay, um, they're on frame one. So now the uh, the cool thing is that a lot of times you can um, 
copy these. If I select all these keyframes here, uh, object transforms, what's this one? And I can copy and I can go to like frame 15, 14 or something like this. And I can right click and say paste flipped or control shift V. Uh, and it only did it for the torso. So why did you do that? Do it for all of these ones. Right click, copy, and then here I want to paste flipped. Oh, it's only doing it for the ones I have selected. Okay, sorry. So let me select all of these again. Object transforms, cop, I'm holding it, I don't know. Do I need to shift click all of these? Maybe. Oh, I think it's because I, I have all selected like that. Okay. Sorry. I'm just going to select the things that I have here. Like this and the torso. I'm selecting all of these keyframes like this. Copy. And then I'm control shift V pasting. There we go. It's because I had too many things selected. Oh, did I move? Did I move when my animation is starting? Why does that not start till frame 15? All right, let's go back here. Hmm, interesting. I wonder why, because remember, I ha I thought I had them starting on frame one, on frame zero. So, okay, let me del delete this. I want this to start on frame one here. Here we go. Okay. Okay. It's happening. Now, why isn't it animating? Oh, did it delete all of those? Shoot, okay, I'm sorry. I know what's happening, undo, undo. Okay, rig, object transforms. I don't want the object transforms to be pasted. I just want the object transforms to be there. That was my problem. I was copying and pasting the initial object transforms here like this, okay. So now it should start moving. Okay, so let's say let's say we want to get three steps before we get to frame thirty. So we need I need these ones to be ten frames apart. So that one goes here. I'm gonna just uh, select these ones again for these guys here. Copy and then paste like this, and then uh, Control Shift V paste the inverse. <laughs> okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, the the other thing is like when when you move. Um, let's get our side view again. When you move, there's like a little bit up and down movement. So like here on frame five, I'm just going to take the torso and uh, move it up a little bit. Torso, torso. Oh yeah, G. And then I insert available. And then I'm just going to copy this one and paste it on 15 and 25. So the other thing too, obviously like the speed is off. Um, do, 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 do. But anyway, um, and like maybe when I get to frame 30 here, we're like wanting to tuck a little bit more. So maybe I'm like, honestly, I think here I need this to be a little bit higher. So I'm gonna do uh, object transforms and um, make this go a little bit higher, Z like this, and update that keyframe. So if I go back to the rig, Pose mode. Anyway, uh, and like here at this point, we're or actually like here at this point, we're tucked. So like, 
and maybe maybe you go back to you go back to your timeline and you you turn on auto keying a little bit and like maybe you like turn the shoulder forward whoops tuck the head down and like really bring the knees in so like this foot comes up here and this foot comes up whoops not that this foot comes up here and the hand comes in I'm doing this super fast and of course here uh, I want to redo these ones because I didn't have it keyed before and then we need like a little bit more forward movement here because he's just sort of like hanging in the air there so this is where you could even go into the uh, the graph editor and let's see uh, object transform that's this one maybe maybe I like make this I don't know maybe not quite as sharp no but see that's the Z uh, I need I need my X here or Y we need this to be moving a little bit faster Now, what's the deal with this? How to get it more realistic? So I kind of want it to like slow down here. So on this, so what I need to do is change the vector of this one. If I go V uh, free, I can kind of change, bring this one in a little bit, so that it kind of stops his movement. Because I feel like he's moving really far forward here, and I just want him to kind of go up. And actually, I maybe even delete this keyframe. Because now at this point, we want him to continue moving forward. Still moving too far in the Y direction. So yeah, this is a little game you, you got to play a little bit. So here he like really starts to go backwards, which is which is the problem. There we go. Anyway, I'm not gonna mess with this too much more. Okay, um, so obviously th this is this is kind of a slow process, which is why you have many many weeks to do it, and it's just like three, three things. So like jump over something, do a flip, or like walk up a wall, or something like that. And I'm not expecting you to like really get it to be lifelike. Obviously, mine doesn't look very lifelike, but um, we're just practicing. Um, the The final steps that you should do is uh, I do want a, a video file. Um, so if we go back, um, I'm just going to add a a light in here. Shift A, add a light. I always like area lights. GZ. GY. And I'm going to make my light, you know, five, not 50, five square. No, we'll make it eight. Yeah, not 85. I, can I type today? Um, let me just see. Give me a render preview of this. And we want this to be like 500. Maybe move this up a little bit, GZ. Oh, I might have auto keying on. Oh yeah, <laughs> so my light's moving. That's fine too. And then uh, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a camera. So at frame zero, so I'm going to go uh, Control Shift Zero. Oops, and why is my camera in a funny aspect ratio? It's 600 by 600. Interesting. So I'm going to make this 1920 by 1080. And on frame one here, you know, so pick a. Uh, you can do, it doesn't have to be that complicated to animate your camera, but like I'm going to get my angle right here and then I'm going to do control alt zero to move my camera. Um, and I believe I've got auto keying on, right? If I go to timeline, yeah, auto keying is on. So my camera's here. 
show me my keyframes for the camera, please. Oh, no, no keyframes. Uh, let me turn auto keying off and let me do I uh, location. Okay, let me hit zero for my to get my camera view here. And now uh, I'm just going to like f follow him this way and do control alt zero here again. And I'm going to I insert keyframe location rotation. Did I do rotation before? I didn't. I didn't. Why don't you rotate back this way? There we go. Okay. And I want to get a little further out here, like this. Okay. Do those keyframes. And then we'll just follow you up like this. I available. Oops, control alt zero, and then do I available. And then just want you just look this way. Control alt zero, I available. So here's my camera animation. It's super basic. Um, maybe you remember that I uh, I showed you a way to do it before um, with tracking and stuff like that. You can do that as well. Doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be exciting. But I just want a little bit of camera movement, and then uh, obviously you can look back to to last week's um, lecture about how to render out the video. Okay, so a little rushed. We're at about an hour. So again, your your assignment is to um, animate a character. Can be this one, can be a different one. Kind of moving over three objects, doing a little parkour. Um, please email me if you have questions. Next week, we will Zoom together and just kind of check in. We, we probably won't have a whole lot to talk about. Um, but otherwise, I look forward to talking with you then. Otherwise, toodaloo.